So what I want to have a look at in this video is just some tips, tricks, and best recommendations around the audit logging capabilities in uh, Microsoft 365. Now, the place that you should be looking to start is the unified audit log. So the unified audit log you'll find we're going to security.microsoft.com and then scrolling down the options on the left-hand side here, and you'll see that there's an option here called audit. Now, when you select that, you'll get the pane on the right-hand side. And the first thing to do is make sure there isn't a banner here telling you that you need to enable this. So again, if it's not enabled, please go in and enable it because this is the logging capability that will capture information about all sorts of activities, as you can see here in uh, Microsoft 365. So you'll be able to look at you know file access, deleted files and all that. Now, if this isn't turned on, it's not gonna capture that information. So job number one is to make sure that you go in, turn that on, it will only capture from that point going forward and therefore you are going to have that information so you can come in here and do a query across you know all of that information you'll see that we can set up a query uh, and a search to do that now importantly remember that the unified audit logs are retained by default for 90 days so you'll have 90 days worth of data to examine if you have an e5 you typically have a longer span of time that being around 365 days so again check the specifics on that but Option number one is make sure that the unified audit logs are on. And option number two, go in, make sure that you have a understanding of how to go in and set up searches and uh, basically use the uh, audit logging uh, capability. Now, the second one that I'll point you to is something that's in uh, PowerShell. Now, there are audit logs or auditing capabilities that are inside Exchange Online, and not all of these are enabled by default. So. What I'm gonna do here, I have connected to Exchange Online, so I'm gonna grab all the information from the Exchange mailboxes, and then what I'm gonna do is just determine, firstly, whether the auditing has been enabled on each and every mailbox. So you'll see here that I'm looking for a property called Audit Enabled, and you'll see that all the mailboxes in this environment do have auditing on, so you need to make sure that uh, is set firstly. The next thing you'll need to look at is the audit log limit. Now, you may need to adjust this to suit your needs. You may also have some limits depending on the plan that you have. So again, try, generally try and extend this to the maximum that is possible. 90 days minimum, I would say to 180 days if possible is even better. Now, once you've done those two settings, turn the auditing on and uh, set the audit log limit to being as long as possible. You'll see in here that if I now look at the mailboxes uh, for a property called audit admin, you'll see that this comes back with a number of properties uh, around whether the auditing capability for admin users on the mailbox is uh, enabled, right? And you'll see that we get a similar capability when we look at audit delegate and also, again, another one here for uh, audit owner. So what that's telling you is, is there are three owners or users of mailboxes potentially, uh, an admin, a delegate, and an owner, and there are logging capabilities uh, for each and every one of those that should be uh, basically turned on. So the idea here is if we have a look at what some of these properties are, so let's have a look at the properties for uh, the admin, you'll see that these are all the fields or all the items that can be audited uh, for the mailbox when it's talking about you know, admin access. If we run it for delegates, you'll see that, again, you get a slightly different set of capabilities, but these are in addition to the admin ones, and you'll see there's another set here also for owners. So in essence, there are you know three properties or three functions of a mailbox, audit, uh, admin, delegate, owner, and they have their own auditing capabilities or auditing properties inside each of those. So if we run this uh, here, you'll see that overall that there are 18 items that can be audited for uh, the admin, 15 for the delegate, and 16 for the owner. Now, at the end of the day, most of, well, about half of these are enabled by default. My advice to you is to go in and enable all of these. You'll need to use PowerShell to do this because these options aren't available in the uh, web interface or in a browser and turn them all on so that you enable all the maximum logging capability for your mailboxes 
and then uh, basically there'll be no additional cost to you of enabling all those capabilities, all those logging uh, features. But importantly, you're capturing as much information uh, as you basically can uh, in the environment. So I think that's you know super important to be able to capture you know all of that information uh, you know really really uh, quickly and have all of that uh, at your fingertips. So if we jump back to the interface and now go into the Azure portal, go into the Azure AD area, you'll see that I, I have in this tenant Azure AD P2. So I have the maximum premium license. Now, if I scroll down here to sign in logs, this is another very important logging area that you should be paying attention to because it's going to show you things like user sign ins. It's going to show you non-interactive sign ins, uh, service principles. So these are typically applications um, inside your Azure AD that are logging in, performing some function, I think third party application or whatever. So this is very, very important to be able to uh, know where this is and be able to access it. Now, the other important thing here to note is that even on the license that you have, if you have Azure AD P2, you'll see that the maximum that I can um, retain logs for here in this interface is simply 30 days. All right. And so with the basic plan, so business basic, business premium, you're only going to really get a maximum of seven days. So after that period, whether it's seven days or 30 days in with an uh, advanced license, those logs won't be available to you. So it's certainly important to remember that uh, when you do need to use them. And you may also want to consider shipping those logs somewhere else so they're retained for a longer period of time. And I'll talk about, again, how you can achieve that. But if you want to use this, you'll see here we can go in and, you know, basically filter the logs here. You'll see here that we can uh, set add additional number of filters. So we go in here and, you know, apply a filter for uh, users if we want. Okay. And uh, that will allow us to, you know, find our information quickly uh, if we need it. And we can also export the data into something like Excel. But the important takeaway is remember the maximum you'll get from your Azure AD sign-in logs here uh, is only going to be 30 days and that requires an advanced license. You'll also notice down the bottom here we've got uh, audit logs as well. So there's another area to you know go in and have a look at. So, But when you typically see a breach or there's some sort of question about a user, you'll need to typically come to the Azure AD logs in here and do some queries, do some um, you know, examination, but remember there are limits on these. So the next item I'll call out uh, here is Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps. Now this is uh, an aggregation of you know logs as well, but it has some unique features, and I certainly recommend it to you. Now, Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps is typically an add-on. A component of it does come with Business Premium. You get the full version with E5 and you can add it as a standalone license. So in this case, what I've done is I've gone to investigate and I've selected the activity log here. Now you'll see that I get a very similar activity log, but if I drill into any of these, you'll notice that I get a lot more information, much easier to uh, read and move between. So I can look at the user that was involved here, the IP addresses, I get nice coding to indicate the uh, IP address that this was initiated from was a Microsoft IP address. So again, lots and lots of really handy information in here. You'll see that I can also take actions quickly and easily um, off of this. Now, if I go back to the top, you'll see that once again, I get a much easier uh, capability here to be able to filter down. So rather than using PowerShell or those Azure AD logs, it's much easier to be able to go in and type the information in here and select from the pull down list. You'll see that I can also save any query I create for future use. So if you're doing a particular query, maybe for looking for certain files or for certain actions, you can save that as a query and that will then allow you to basically um, you know, go back to that point. So you'll see here that I can select from a number of pre can queries. And when I do, that query will run, but you'll notice this is now in what's called the advanced filters option. So I could select that and go in and do my advanced option. So once again, if I want to do that, I go back to the activity log, look at the generic capabilities uh, before, but you'll see here now that I turn this advanced filters on and off, 
I get more capabilities about you know, creating a more granular filter uh, if I do need to you know, go in and do it. Now, what I also like about Defender for Cloud Apps is also the ability to go in and look at the uh, file activity, right? So again, you need to make sure this is enabled and typically you're gonna need Defender for uh, Endpoint as well. So we should be able to go in here and turn this on and save that and then that will start capturing uh, any of our file capability as well. So the activity logging will be turned on by default here and again, you do need to go in and turn on the file logging. You get that same uh, nice style uh, interface. Now you'll see also here Defender for Cloud Apps gives us the ability to use templates and policies. So what that means is, is that we can use Defender for Cloud Apps to generate alerts to take actions as well. So I won't go into that, but the idea here is this is going to be I suppose a bit like the unified audit logs on uh, steroids it's going to give you a much better much easier interface to uh, work with when you're doing queries and uh, looking for information through all the logs there the other point i'll notice here is that you also have the ability to you know potentially export this so you'll see there's an option here to you know do all your filtering get the log information that you want uh, filter it down to the information you need and then you can export it to something like excel and then you can do further querying so over here i've got the ability to you know uh, set columns rows and all that sort of stuff so generally remember that defender for cloud apps i think is a must-have but it's generally going to be an add-on uh, and it's going to give you a much better interface and more capability when it comes to uh, working uh, with your logs now, I think that the ultimate for working with logs is going to be Microsoft Sentinel. Now, Microsoft Sentinel is an Azure service. That means you need to have an Azure subscription. You need to uh, set it up. Now, what you can do with Sentinel is you can ingest logs from you know, various locations. So if we go down and look at the data connectors here, this is where you would go up and ingest logs from Microsoft services, from third-party services uh, as well. So Sentinel has a number of free ingestion capabilities from uh, Microsoft, so from free data connectors you can go in uh, and uh, enable if you want. So you'll see in the list here, there's lots and lots of uh, options, including, you know, the obviously the Azure ones, we've got third-party firewalls uh, and so on. All right, so I would go in and look at the uh, free or included connectors, things like uh, Microsoft Office for, uh, Microsoft Defender for Office 365. Okay, set all those up, get those going, then that's going to bring in uh, the information. And if you want, you can then, you know, run queries and analytics and set up alerts on it. But independent of that, having all the logs in one place means that we can go into the logging capability here and we can query across again all our information so if i set up a query here using the kql query language in this case just called audit logs and set the time range to seven days you'll see that if i now run this this is going to basically spit back those uh, audit logs for me so they appear in the Azure AD for the period of time, seven or 30 days, but by importing the data here into Sentinel, I'm going to be able to keep it for whatever period I denominate uh, in Sentinel. So the good thing with Sentinel is, is that you will generally get 90 days of uh, log retention for free here. So if we go in and quickly you know, have a look here, you'll see that the ability here is uh, going to give us you know, the ability to uh, bring that information to something called you know, log analytics here. So what we can do here, thanks to you know, Sentinel, is we can bring those logs in if we have our free uh, connectors from Microsoft. You'll see here, it's only gonna cost us a relatively small amount uh, per month uh, to achieve this. And you get typically 90 days uh, for free, with uh, Sentinel and any add-on allows the storage or the information to be stored in blob storage, which is uh, generally quite, um, you know, quite cheap. So if we go in here and look at the retention, all right, so you'll see here that by default you get uh, the 31 days, but if we look down here, right, so you'll see here that um, it's set to 90 days, right? So the retention is set up to 90 days. So generally you get 90 days uh, free retention uh, for Sentinel. So that's gonna extend it beyond that seven or 30 days we get uh, with our Azure AD. So again, really easy to set up, really easy to manage. And I would suggest to you it's a really good location 
to have all the logs from you know, Intune, uh, the Unified Audit Log, Defender, uh, everything going into here. So there's one repository, uh, gives you a consistent number of days that the information is retained for. If you want to extend it to 180 days, 365 days, you can do that quite quickly and easily uh, inside Azure. There is a small cost, and as you see, um, it generally only costs a few dollars. Again, my advice is start with the basics and then extend up there. But it's really going to give you this super capability when it comes to using logs. And we do get a number of pre-canned queries and templates Microsoft provides us. And we can just go in and you know run a query across all our data that is being accumulated here at Sentinel. And if we want, we can also go in and set up an alert rule uh, as well on that. So I think that's really the ultimate for working with logs. So to summarize here, make sure that all the logging capability inside things like Microsoft 365 services, the Unified Audit Log is all enabled, and you are familiar and comfortable with using and understanding how they work prior to needing it. Have a look also at the Azure AD uh, logs and sign-ins here again, just familiarize yourself with that. Have a look at the Exchange logs for mailboxes as well, you need PowerShell to do that. I would also strongly consider Defender for Cloud Apps. Generally, there's a free trial for 30 days, I believe, that you can set up and use it. It will come with more the more advanced licenses, uh, but make sure you have that capability. You can drill in here and look at the activity log. It gives you a much better interface. But ultimately, I think the best location is to ship all your logs or push them into Sentinel, one big database where all that information is located. You can query it. You can create Power BI dashboards and whatnot across that and use the KQL language, which is also available for searching logs in things like Defender for Endpoint to go in and accumulate and you know use that information. But as always, make sure that you set it up and you understand how it works before you need it. There's nothing worse than having to use it or need it desperately and none of it's been set up. Because remember, most of the logging capabilities are only turned on uh, by someone. So Typically, there's going to be some of it turned on, but a lot of it needs to be enabled. So make sure you go through and enable all the logging capabilities throughout your environment to make it easier for you to find information to do incident response uh, when you need it. So hopefully that's given you a bit of an overview of where the major logs are, uh, but go through all of the services, make sure they all are accumulating the max amount of logs possible. And again, my advice would be is to ship those logs or push those logs into Sentinel. So then you've got one location for whatever period of time you want to retain those logs for. All right, with that, thank you very much for watching this video.